An article in the April 15th, 2022 edition of The Hill is headlined, Over 1,000 scientists from around the world take to the streets in week-long climate protests. The article indicates NASA scientist Peter Kalmus and three other people were arrested after they chained themselves to the front door of a Chase Bank building in protest of the company's investment in fossil fuels. The story quotes an article published by Business Insider a week before this article was published in The Hill. The Business Insider article from April 6, 2022 included a quote from NASA climate change scientist Peter Kalmus. Quote, We've been trying to warn you guys for so many decades that we're heading towards a effing catastrophe, and we've been ignored. The scientists of the world are being ignored, and it's got to stop. We're not joking. We're not lying. We're not exaggerating. End quote. According to my Oxford Online Dictionary, to lie is to say or write something that you know is not true. In other words, Kalmus is either lying or he is ignorant. Let's briefly and charitably assume he is merely ignorant about abrupt, irreversible climate change. This conclusion indicates he is not familiar with reports published by the stunningly conservative Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that have already concluded Earth is in the midst of abrupt and irreversible climate change. In other words, assuming Kalmus is ignorant makes him a reliable source only for the lying corporate media, such as The Hill, and employees and government agencies. He is not a reliable source about climate change, although he is a paid climate scientist. As an employee of the United States government, he is paid by taxpayers. In other words, taxpayers such as me are paying the salaries of ignorant so-called scientists. I doubt I need to point out that if Kalmus is not ignorant, then he is purposely saying something that he knows is not true. In other words, in the unlikely event he is ignorant, then he is lying, on my dime and on yours. Let's deconstruct the quote from Kalmus. In full, it reads, quote, We've been trying to warn you guys for so many decades that we're heading towards a effing catastrophe, and we've been ignored. The scientists of the world are being ignored, and it's got to stop. We're not joking. We're not lying. We're not exaggerating. End quote. Kalmus is absolutely correct that, quote, We've been trying to warn you guys for so many decades that we're heading towards a effing catastrophe, and we've been ignored. End quote. Relying on research conducted by others, I point out warnings dating back several decades in my essay at GuyMcPherson.com, Extinction Foretold, Extinction Ignored. As indicated by the title of this essay, the warnings have been ignored. Expecting this pattern to change seems a tad naive. Kalmus continues, quote, The scientists of the world are being ignored, and it's got to stop, end quote. Really? Why would it stop? We are firmly embedded within a society that believes celebrities including celebrity politicians, not scientists. Why would the populace suddenly show an interest in evidence? Why would a purposely dumbed-down culture turn on the proverbial dime, do the proverbial about-face, and suddenly conclude scientists are to be t- are to be believed? Nice try, Kalmus. If you live long enough, I suspect you'll become aware that almost nobody in contemporary society gives a damn about evidence. I wish it were otherwise. Next up, quote, We're not joking. We're not lying. We're not exaggerating, end quote. I'm sure you're not joking, although the populace remains unconvinced. Perhaps a significant number of people would be interested if you had a sense of humor about the whole stinking situation. I'm not at all sure you're telling the truth, as I've already indicated. I strongly suspect you're exaggerating in the opposite direction you're implying. Let's turn to additional evidence in support of my statements. As I have mentioned previously in this space, and that's a line you'll hear frequently throughout this video, as I have mentioned previously in this space, based on the work of renowned professor Andrew Glickson in his October 9th, 2020 book, The Event Horizon, quote, During the Anthropocene, greenhouse gas forcing has risen by more than 2.0 watts per meter squared, equivalent to more than 2 degrees C above pre-industrial temperatures, which constitutes an abrupt event over a period not much longer than a lifetime, end quote. In other words, Glickson admits we have crossed the 2C Rubicon in the abstract to Chapter 5 of his book. Glickson reached this conclusion in a book published more than 18 months ago and written well before then. I am not a climate scientist, yet I know about Glickson's conclusion. Kalmus is a climate scientist, yet he doesn't understand a key component of climate science, how much Earth has already warmed. I mentioned that 2 degrees C above the 1750 baseline is completely irrelevant. How could that be? 
We've been fed the 2C nonsense for such a long time that some people actually believe it. Apparently, even Kalmus believes it. However, the advisory group on greenhouse gases admitted in its October 1990 report that 1C above the 1750 baseline was the absolute upper limit. The advisory group on greenhouse gases was the precursor to the IPCC, and it launched this warning in the final year of its existence. Climate speaker and writer David Spratt said, in a presentation delivered in October 2014, that 0.5C above the 1750 baseline had already triggered self-reinforcing feedback loops. Finally, the IPCC joined the party with separate reports in 2018 and 2019. The first report was published on October 8, 2018, entitled global warming of 1.5 degrees. In this report from more than three and a half years ago, the IPCC concluded climate change is abrupt. Quote, these global level rates of human driven change far exceed the rates of change driven by geophysical or biosphere forces that have altered the Earth's system trajectory in the past. Even abrupt geophysical events do not approach current rates of human driven change. End quote. The IPCC cites two peer-reviewed articles in reaching this conclusion, one each from 2015 and 2017, respectively. The IPCC concluded climate change is irreversible in its September 24, 2019 report, IPCC Special Report on the Ocean and Cryosphere in a Changing Climate. In other words, this report from more than two and a half years ago and published by the stunningly conservative IPCC concluded climate change was irreversible. Specifically, I quote from page 77 of this report. Quote, Ocean acidification and deoxygenation, ice sheet and glacier mass loss, and permafrost degradation are expected to be irreversible on timescales relevant to human societies and ecosystems. End quote. The IPCC report quotes five peer-reviewed papers in reaching the conclusion of irreversibility, and it indicates an overheated ocean is responsible for the irreversibility of climate change. As I have reported previously in this space, relying on the work of others, the IPCC is conservative. This conclusion was reached in the conservative peer-reviewed journal Bioscience in its March 2019 issue with a paper titled Statistical Language Backs Conservatism in Climate Change Assessments. This paper was written by Gerardo Perez and three other colleagues. I quote from the abstract, quote, We found that the tone of the IPCC's probabilistic language is remarkably conservative and emanates from the IPCC recommendations themselves, complexity of climate research, and exposure to politically motivated debates. End quote. Because I am not a climate scientist, all of my work relies on the scholarly work of others. Because I am a rationalist, I know how to critically evaluate the work of others. I have been conducting this secondary research on climate change for four decades. Because I have not been paid for my work during the last 13 years, I can speak and write the full truth. And so, I do. Back to the article in the April 15, 2022 edition of The Hill, headlined, Over 1,000 Climates, sorry, Over 1,000 Scientists from Around the World Take to the Streets in Week-Long Climate Protests. Why? Why would you risk incarceration? and encourage others to do the same when abrupt, irreversible climate change is already underway? Why would you spend any of your precious remaining time behind bars? Why would you libel and slander people who are telling the full truth about abrupt, irreversible climate change? So many questions, so little time. I expect to receive no relevant answers from the likes of Kalmus and reporters working for the corporate media. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing to this channel. If you subscribe, please click the bell so you'll be notified about future videos. Feel free to share this video. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks for watching.